All right, in this video, we're finally getting to a little bit of math that you might not have seen before in any of your other classes. We're going to talk about a partial derivative. Now, we know that a derivative is a slope. It tells us the change in one thing when something else changes. It's a rise over run. And remember that the symbol we use for a regular derivative, not a partial derivative, they're similar, but a regular derivative is usually something like dy dx. And it tells us the rise over the run. For each one unit change in x, how many units is y changing? So if we had a slope of 3, a derivative of 3, we could think about that as being 3 over 1. For each one unit change in x, how many units change in y will there be? A partial derivative is very similar, except with a partial derivative, we will have more than one variable that could be changing in an equation. So that's where a partial derivative is useful. A partial derivative is when you have more than one variable in an equation you might change, and you want to know how the slope or the rate of change of one of those variables is holding everything else constant. So if we're just changing one of the variables, that's what makes it a partial, and we hold everything else that's going on constant, how fast does the output change or how fast does y change? Well, we just change one variable. So the only way to see how this works is to just do it. The rule is, when you're doing a partial derivative, treat everything in the equation that's not the variable you're looking at as if it were a constant in a regular derivative. So if you're taking the derivative of something that's involving the variable you're interested in, you take the derivative of it. Otherwise, if it's a different variable, treat it just like it's a constant, just like the number 5 would be treated, okay? So let's dive in and look at an example here. So suppose we have this function here y, and y is affected by two variables, x and z. So y equals 5x squared times z cubed plus 2x plus 3z plus 5. There are two different partial derivatives or two different slopes we might be interested in here. One would be take the derivative of y, see how y changes when we change x. So this is called the partial derivative of y with respect to x. And the symbol we use, instead of using a d, we use a d, but it looks kind of like a curly d. And this d is a d in the Cyrillic language. I know, too much information. That's not going to be on the test. And you don't have to, for me in this class, use a curly d when you're representing a partial derivative. It's just if you're ever looking at a book that talks about derivatives and partial derivatives, usually for a normal derivative they'll use a d. For a partial derivative they'll use this kind of curly d. All right? All right, enough notation. Let's get into doing this. So we just go step by step in each term in the equations. So let's start with this first term here, 5x squared z cubed. What we're going to do is, since we're taking the derivative with respect to the x term here, we're going to take everything that is not the x term, and we're going to treat it like it's a constant. So that 5 is a constant, so we're not going to touch it. But because it's multiplied, we have to keep it, right? Same thing with the z cubed. Since it's being treated like it's a constant, but it's multiplied just like the 5, we're going to keep it but we're not going to mess with it in any way. Here's a way to think about doing this. We just write down the 5 and the z cubed, so 5z cubed. We're just carrying them along. And then we want to take the derivative of the part that has the x. So this x squared, now we're actually going to take the derivative of that. So what's the derivative of x squared? 2x, so times 2x. We're done taking the derivative of that first term there, and then we move on to the rest of the equation. How about plus 2x? We take the derivative of it. So what's the derivative of 2x? It's just 2. All right, so plus 2. We move on to the next term, 3z. We're treating everything that's not an x like it's a constant, just like it's the number 5. So this whole thing, 3z, we're going to treat just like this term, 5. Since there's no x's in there, what's the derivative of 5 with respect to x? Well, it's 0. So therefore, what's the derivative of 3z with respect to x? 
it's also zero. So if it doesn't have an x in it, we don't include it in our derivative. It doesn't affect the rate of change when we change x if it doesn't have an x involved at all. So we could go back and just simplify this bit here and say, okay, well, our final answer is we have 5 times 2 is 10, and we have a z cubed, and we have an x. All right, so that's simplifying that first part, plus 2. And what this function would do is tell us that when we change x, it'll tell us how does this output value y over here, how will that be changing as we change x? How fast is y going to change if I add 1 to x? Well, this equation here tells us that. All right, now let's do the same thing, but we're going to take the derivative of the function y with respect to z. It's going to give us a slope or a rate of change. How fast is this function changing every time we add 1 to z? All right, so let's clean up our equation that we have up here. So let's focus on the first term, 5x squared z cubed. What are we going to treat like a constant? Well, the constant and the x squared part. Since we're not going to be messing with that, we're treating it just like a constant, we can just go ahead and write that part down. 5x squared. The z cubed bit, now we take the derivative of that and we write it down multiplied times the rest of the term because it's all multiplied together, right? What should we write down there? 3z squared because that's the derivative of z cubed. All right, now let's go through the rest of the terms. What's the derivative of 2x with respect to z? Zero, because there's no z there. What's the derivative of 3z with respect to z? Three. All right, so let's do a plus three. And what's the derivative of five with respect to z or anything else? It's just zero, so that's not going to be involved. So now we come back and we clean up this answer. And we could say it is 5 and times 3. Let's collect those constants. 15x squared z squared plus 3. And that is going to give us our partial derivative function with respect to z. And it's going to tell us for each time we add 1 to z, how much is the function the y value, how much is that going to change? Now, just comparing these two a little bit, we can see that one of these is bigger than the other, if it looks like, right? So it's hard to tell. It's going to depend on what values we have plugged in for both z and x, right? But let's just suppose, to make this simpler, let's suppose that z and x are both 1. If z and x are both 1, then this z cubed here is just going to become 1, and the x will be 1, right? So we're going to be left with 10 times 1 plus 2, or 12. And similarly, if we plug in x equals 1 and z equals 1, we're going to be left with just 15 plus 3. So at least in the part of the graph where x and z are both 1, we see that when we change z, we're getting a bigger effect. 15 plus 3 would be the rate of change, 18, compared to if we were to change x, the rate of change would only be 12 for each additional unit we add to x. Now I know this is a little weird, but we're just introducing these concepts here now so that when we start building on these later, we'll talk about it again and it'll make a little bit more sense as we get used to this. But there are two slopes. Let's look at this in a graph real quick. So here is a three-dimensional look at that graph. And the x-axis is right along here on the right side. The z-axis is along the left side here. And the y value is going up. This is going 2,000, 10,000, 14,000. Now those slopes we were talking about... Let's turn this function around this way a little bit. You see these lines shooting backwards. What those lines are helping us visualize is 
Suppose x was equal to a certain value. x is being held constant, let's say at 3 right here. This curved line that goes back and up is helping us visualize the slope. That as we hold x constant, but what we're doing as we move backwards is we're letting z increase. As we hold x constant and we let z increase, how fast is this line shooting up? How fast is y increasing? That's the partial derivative with respect to z because we're letting z change as we move backwards. And how fast is y going up? What's that slope? Well, we see that it changes depending on how far we're going back in the graph. Now let's turn the graph this way. And now what we're doing is we're saying, well, let's Let's pick a value of z, like say 3, or 2, or 1, or 4. But if we let z be held constant at 3, but we let x change, we're moving back through the graph, we're climbing a hill, right? We're both moving further along the x direction, but as we do, we're going to have to climb up this hill, and we see that it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper as we go backwards. So this would be illustrating the partial derivative with respect to x. As we change x, moving backward through the graph, but we hold z constant, say at 3, could be at 2, could be at 4, but 3 is a little easier to visualize here. How fast is y increasing as we change x? Now remember what we said. From looking at our derivative, it looked like the derivative with respect to z was a little steeper than x. And we can kind of see that here, right? As we add x's, look how fast we're going up. It looks like we're going from 0 up to maybe 4,000 on this graph. But what happens as we change z? Ceteris paribus, right? We're holding one thing constant. That means all, holding all else equal. If we're talking about x equals 3 and we increase z, look, we're going from y on the y-axis being 0 up to, you know, maybe 6,000. A little bit higher than here where we're only going up to maybe three or 4,000. The partial derivative is indicating a steeper increase in y as we change z compared to if we're changing x. Kind of weird, but kind of interesting. All right, well, let's take another couple of partial derivatives. In this class, most of the time when we're taking a partial derivative, it's going to be with a function that looks something like this, where everything's just multiplied together. Now, this particular kind of function, where we have two variables, we could have more, but we'll work with two 99% of the time. And everything's multiplied together. We might have a constant. We have an x raised to a power. We have a y raised to a power. This kind of function in economics we call a Cobb-Douglas function. Cobb-Douglas. And it's very useful. It's not perfect, but it's an interesting kind of function to study when you're looking at either utility, how happy does something make people, or production functions. If we add inputs x and y, how fast does output go up? Looking at a production function. Here we're imagining this is a production function. Total product, output Q, is 2x to the point 3 times y to the point 7. Let's take the partial derivative with respect to x. Now what we call that is the marginal product of x. And what it tells us is, if we're adding one more unit of input x, maybe labor, how much more output do I get? What's the slope? What's the rate of change of output when I add one more unit of x? All right, I want you to try this. Pause the video and see if you remember what we were doing right up here. And see if you can figure out what the partial derivative with respect to x is. Okay, so the rule is, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we want to hold everything that doesn't involve an x constant. So that 2, we treat it like a constant because it is, and the y to the point 7, treat it like a constant. So we'd say the partial derivative of q with respect to x equals 2, y to the point 7, those parts aren't changing. And then we take the derivative of the x part, the x to the point 3, so what's the derivative of x to the point 3? It's point 3 
multiply by that exponent times x, and then we have to subtract 1 from the exponent. 0.3 minus 1 equals minus 0.7. And then we want to simplify what we have. So we have a 2 and a 0.3. So 2 times 0.3 is 0.6. We can collect the constants there. And then we have y to the 0.7 times x to the 0.7. Sorry, x to the minus 0.7. And we're done. That's the partial derivative of Q of output with respect to the input X or the marginal product of X function. Now let's find the marginal product of Y function. Everything that doesn't have a Y, we're just going to hold constant. And so that's the 2X to the 0.3 part. Partial derivative of Q with respect to Y is 2X to the 0.3. And now we take the derivative of that Y to the 0.7 part. What are we going to get? We're going to get... 0.7 times y, and then we're going to subtract 1 from that 0.7 exponent. We get minus 0.3. And then we simplify. So we get the 2 times 0.7 is 1.4. x to the 0.3 times y to the minus 0.3. All right, and the last thing I want to do in this video is just practice our simplification using exponents again because this is actually an important thing we're going to do later on when we talk about utility theory and production theory. What are we going to get if we do the ratio? We want to look at the ratio of these two things. So let me copy these down. And all we want to do is look at the ratio of these two things. Is this is something we call the marginal rate of substitution. So the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. What it does is it gives us an idea of how we can substitute input x for input y, keeping output the same. So for example, how many workers could I replace with one machine? is something that this measure will tell us. Let's use our simplification powers. To do this, what we want to do is just think about the ratio of each of these three things and simplify them. So what's 0.6 over 1.4? We get about 0.429. And then we can look at the y's. Everything that involves a y, so we have y to the 0.7 on top, y to the minus 0.3 on the bottom, you subtract exponents when you have a ratio, when you're dividing. What is 0.7 minus a minus, be careful, 0.7 minus a minus 0.3? Well, that's the same as 0.7 plus 0.3, and plus 0.7 plus 0.3 is 1. So what we're left with here is y to the first power. And now let's do the same kind of thing for the x's. We have an x to the minus 0.7 divided by x to the 0.3. So let's subtract those exponents carefully. What's minus 0.7 minus 0.3? We get negative 1. So here we get x to the minus 1 power. Now a way we could rewrite this, and again, this is your preference, but the way I like to look at this is this way, 0.429y, and then x to the minus 1 is just x in the denominator. That is a nice, simple-looking equation compared to what we started with over here. And it turns out a lot of the equations we work with will start from a very ugly beginning, but will become very simple after we simplify them down. So that is an introduction to the idea of partial derivatives. We're just changing one variable at a time, asking what's that rate of change or what's that slope, holding everything else constant. We treat the things we're not taking the derivative of as a constant. We'll look at more examples of this later. If you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, this is Dr. B signing out, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.